The Storm Center Thursday coming up as primary elections draw closer. Some people still aren't sure who they'll be going to vote for. What they say are important factors still to come. Plus, Sunday River's getting a makeover. The additions included in the plan coming up. Okay, looking at the school bell forecast, and some schools have already canceled, including Lewiston and Auburn. No school in Lewiston, Auburn today. Other schools will go, and while we get some snow out there and some light icing, I think the kids definitely need boots and winter gear. A few inches of snow today, bigger event tomorrow. It's all coming to you in a few minutes. Time now for your morning rush. Maine's new prescription drug price transparency rules are in effect. The rules require drug makers, wholesale distributors, and pharmacy benefit managers to report prescription price data to the Maine Health Data Organization. It's basically a way to determine how drug makers arrive at the prices they charge for their medications and explain the reasons for any sudden spikes in prices. Sunday River has a new plan to draw in even more visitors. The 10-year plan includes a new restaurant, spa, and cheer lifts. And one of the new lifts will provide access to a new neighborhood of homes in the works. Riverton Elementary School in Portland has a new name. The Board of Public Education voted to rename it the Gerald E. Talbot Community School. This is in honor of the Portland civil rights icon. Talbot is the first African-American to be elected to Maine's legislature and to chair the Maine State Board of Education. The name change will take effect this fall and the district will announce its uh, fundraising campaign to help pay for a new school sign. And actor Kirk Douglas has passed away at the age of 103. The legendary actor starred in dozens of films in a career that spanned nearly 70 years. Douglas was nominated for Oscars three times for Champion, The Bad and the Beautiful, and Lust for Life. And that is your Morning Rush. The Democratic candidates for president are running, or I guess if you will, driving, all over New Hampshire this week. In Summersworth, right on the border with Maine, former Vice President Joe Biden held a rally yesterday. Biden told supporters he didn't do very well in Iowa and is committed to fighting hard for a top finish in New Hampshire. Supporters told us they think Biden is the best choice, but some others said they just are looking for anybody who could beat President Trump. From the moment I announced 
that I believe, as the mayor said, we're in a battle for the soul of this nation. And I really do. The candidate who can beat Trump and who has the experience to hit the ground running and get some things done. Biden, he's, I'm not sure he's going to bring in the young vote. And, you know, it's they all have it's, something they good. They all have their strengths yeah. and weaknesses. And unfortunately, you know, you got this one's got this, that one's got that. It's like there's not one that's like, OK, that's the one. All those voters will get plenty of chances to see and hear the candidates over the next several days. News Center Maine's Pat Callahan and Hannah Deneen are on the ground in New Hampshire, and they'll be there throughout the primary. We'll have full coverage for you on air and online. All right, still to come, for college seniors, this time of year is the beginning of the end. <laughs> and now's a great time for them to start their job hunt in Maine. The details coming up. All right, we've been talking about it for days, and now it's here. I know, <laughs> right? Came in Monday morning and was like, uh-oh. Yep. So four days ago, we started talking. Oh, stop. <laughs> Just stop now. <laughs> Let's not even bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> you did it for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> His Captain Obvious yeah, exactly. hat oh, on yeah, today. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah. so, so the snow has started. It is overspreading us from south to kind of north. And while it looks like we're getting some snow in the Bangor area at the moment, it's still kind of dry, just a few flurries getting to the ground. But we have had steady snow for another for about an hour or so uh, from Portland South, and we've got solid coatings out there. It's steady in York County. I threw temperatures on here too. The mildest spot we have is Cape Elizabeth at 28. So as the snow falls, if there isn't a treated treatment on the roads, it is going to be very slick and very slippery. Steadiest snows are on up through the Sebago Lake area, greater Portland on up through Falmouth and Cumberland and Cumberland Foreside. And then we have another little burst of heavier snow right here from Turner on over to Paris and up to Rumford too, right along Route 2. A little lighter for Lewis and Auburn, but at a steady clip. Augusta also some steady snow and then the shades of blue get lighter. And while it looks like we are getting some snow here, we probably are getting some flurries. 
the air is still super, super dry and it's going to take a little while to saturate. But by the time you're heading out the door, say seven o'clock or so, the snow will have started. Now we have plenty of cold right now. Unfortunately, this high goes that way and doesn't stay right there to lock it in. And that means milder air will flow over that cold at the surface. And that's a recipe for a lot of mixing and mixing is going to play a big time role tonight and tomorrow, especially when the big area of low pressure works in. That'll be the more impactful of the two storms. So snow spreading in now steady, but a moderate clip. And I think the crews out there and the treatments that are out there will help us out quite a bit this morning, midday, and especially this evening, provided they keep throwing some salt and sand on the roads for traction. It'll be a still, though, a very slow and slippery morning commute. We get to the middle of the day. It's still snowing, but the snow phase is nearing an end. Notice the mixing line working up through the greater Portland area. The intensity at this point too will start to let up. It'll get a lot lighter this afternoon and a lot lighter this evening. In fact, we'll just have a light mix at this point from route to southward. Light sleet pellets, some light freezing drizzle where we get this tiniest little glaze. But as I said, I think treatments will help out the evening commute a ton. The all snow zone is north of Route 2 on up through the mountains and north, and that'll continue through the night. So this is round one. This is today, two to four inches. We've been advertising this throughout the last few days, and basically it falls between now and noon. As we go through the night, we kind of go through this lull in the precipitation. We still get light snow up in the mountains and north. Elsewhere, just some very, very light icing. That continues overnight and through tomorrow morning. And then the second low starts to get closer, moving through the Gulf of Maine. Precipitation intensity picks up later tomorrow morning through early afternoon. While aloft, we still have some warm air. At the surface, it's going to be cold. This is an icing event, and I think it sneaks all the way down to the coastline, too. Don't sleep along the coastline. We're going to get a glaze in the coast tomorrow as well. 3 o'clock, the storm is swirling by. Cold air is going to try to wrap into the backside of the storm, and we should end as a brief period of snow, although along the coast it won't be a very long period of snow. Inland and up in the mountains and north it will be. So I'm most concerned with this icy glaze that we get tomorrow. Lewiston, Augusta, Bangor certainly in it, but I think the coastline will also be in it too. Even though this particular model doesn't show any colors at the coast, as I mentioned, don't sleep on it. There are going to be widespread glazes, very slippery roads and kind of treacherous out there. I don't think we're going to have enough ice on the limbs to crack them so that we get outages or widespread outages, but a few may happen through the afternoon and through the evening. Then we get the final little burst of snow as the storm winds down. It won't be much along the coast, maybe another inch or two. Lewiston, Augusta, Bangor, perhaps a third inch. Mountains six to 12 and maybe 12 or more up across the rooftop of the state. And if you do the two day math, that could be like 16 or 17 inches of snow in snowmobile country and also up in the ski resorts too. So the weekend will be a lot of fun once we get through this storm. Gale watches are up for tomorrow, seas two to four feet and east winds 10 to 20 knots. So it has started. We've got light snow falling through the morning, two to four inches this afternoon as it tapers off and we get into this lull, it'll turn into this light mix. With icy mix expected through the majority of tomorrow, it will end and change over to snow for the afternoon and evening before it completely comes to an end. And at the coastline, also an icy mix. And then the sun's back over the weekend, but those temps are going to be really cold, especially Sunday, because we start out in the single digits and we only get up to like 25 degrees. So that's a pretty cold weekend. Pretty cold weekend. Yes, sir. Well, yep. I mean, even though the sun's there, it's not going to really do a lot. It's it won't help us much something. at all, but all milder right. next week. All right. If you want to check out storm closings and delays, like you're probably all curious about this morning, all you have to do is send a text message. Everybody does that. Text the word storm to 828-6622. You'll get a link sent right back to you for a complete list. All of the closings and delays, you just have to click. Couldn't make it any easier. There you go. So a new semester just started for college students, but for seniors in college, their focus is on graduation already and then finding a job. Yeah, if they're lucky, and luckily <laughs> for them, Maine needs a lot of workers. So that's why there was a career fair at the University of Maine at Orono yesterday. Employers came to meet interested applicants trying to fill more jobs than ever before in the state's open job market. That's because unemployment in Maine is at 2.9%, the lowest it's been since the Department of Labor began recording back in 1976. 
I still to come when a third grader found out that his friend needed heart surgery, he knew he had to do something to help. The story of how he rallied his classmates coming up in Heart Threats. Heart Threads, stories that uplift and inspire to help you start your day right. It's a good friend of mine. I've known him since he was pre-K. He's my best friend. feels really good inside and warm. I know Jesus is proud of me. I couldn't believe it. I never had this done for me. I'd just like to thank everybody. What more can you right? say? I mean, from the mouths of babes, a little third grader. Right? right? If it had been $50? Hundred dollars, six hundred fifty dollars. It would have been that just as meaningful. Twenty-five cent pencil. Amazing. I mean, that was, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> All know, right. It's so hard to talk after this. I know. <laughs> All right. Sean Stackhouse will do some talking for us, and Zach Blanchard. Here's what's coming up at five thirty. Well, you can see it on the sign right now. Speed limits have been reduced to forty-five miles per hour on parts of the main turnpike. We'll have your latest road conditions live and stormy today. Plus, we're live in Washington this morning where President Donald Trump is expected to hold what he's calling a victory speech. Coming up, we'll have how Maine senators are opening up about their final votes in his impeachment trial.
A shoe store that's known as the oldest in America has a new initiative. It's to help people in the community. Colburn Shoe, it's in Belfast, created a pay what you can rack. Pretty simple, you pay what you can, and now whatever you can afford for a pair of shoes. If the pair fits you, you drop what you can afford inside of an anonymous donation box, you take the shoes home, and that's it. The owner hopes to set an example for others to just give a helping hand whenever you can. We all have the ability to help in so many ways. Everyone can help. Um, I just have a platform of shoes, but whoever you know takes these shoes, you know, they can write letters, they can call, they can help the elderly, they can shovel. You know, it's just a, a way of having the whole community pay it forward for each other. The store wants to keep this initiative alive by restocking the rack all year round to help those that most need a new pair of shoes. That is pretty awesome. Kindness and generosity wow. always has a ripple effect, right? right? Just makes you feel good. Just to watch the story, but good for you. All right, first look at your weather today's top stories is just ahead. Our next half hour starts right now. Snow this morning is just the start of a two day storm. I'll have the latest. It's going to be a messy morning commute today. We'll be keeping an eye on the roads for you live from Stormy. Ms. Collins, not guilty. And we're live in Washington this morning where the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump is over. Trump acquitted on all charges. Coming up, we'll tell you how Maine Senator Susan Collins and Angus King are opening up on their decisions. This is The Morning Report. Good morning. It's a storm center Thursday morning. Everybody have a good morning. And I'm Sharon Rose Vazness. Yep, we're covering the storm. We're covering some other news. Let's start with the storm, though. We've got uh, we've got Sean out in Stormy, of course, and Todd in the Weather Center. Todd, take it away. All righty, Sharon Lee. Good morning. We'll get to Sean in a second or two. First of all, the storm has begun. Snow is overspreading the state from southwest to northeast. Leading edge still getting chewed up by some dry air, but once we saturate, the snow intensity will pick up. We have steady snow that's falling from Waterville southbound and has been for the last hour or so already snow covered roads. Plenty of cold in place right now. Unfortunately, this high drifts east doesn't lock it in. Mild air flows up and over the cold. That's a recipe for mixing. This will not be an all snow event and it's a two day storm. Tomorrow's more impactful than today's with a lot of icing. So here's the timeline during your morning drive. You'll encounter steady snow. Nothing too heavy, but definitely a moderately paced one. So roads will get slick and snow covered if they're not treated. Midday still snowing, but check out the mixing line working its way up through the greater Portland area. Then this afternoon, the intensity of the precipitation really starts to lighten up. We'll just have this very light mixed precipitation with some sleet, maybe some drizzle along the coast and some steadier snow up north. And that trend continues through the evening and the overnight. Tomorrow is round two where we get more significant ice and snow. So here's round one looking at two to four inches and basically it falls between now and noon. Snow arriving at the moment mid 20s, still snowing midday 28 and then a very light wintry mix this afternoon and evening where we get these really thin glazes of ice temps around 30. Much more on tomorrow with the more impactful ice and snow coming up. But first, we'll check in with Sean Stackhouse live and stormy this morning. Hey, Todd, good morning. Well, we are in stormy this morning, as you had just mentioned. And let's give you a look outside in just a quick second. We are in York right now, about to go through the toll plaza here. And you had mentioned that roads may not be looking too good, and that's what they're looking like right now you can see even in, there, in an area that's seeing a lot of cars going through just how uh, much snow has really collected through throughout the morning when i came into work today i was noticing that the roads in portland were all really treated well there was you know a, no a noticeable layer of salt and when i was speaking with folks at the main department of transportation yesterday they also planned to be pre-treating these roads but the snow has been coming down pretty quickly and we can notice it accumulating on the ground already and it's something that we really haven't seen much of in recent weeks. It's been pretty quiet. And since I came back to the morning report, this is my first storm center, believe it or not. And it's, it's nice to be out for someone who loves storm center. It's exciting. But for those of you who have to drive through it, 
it may be a little tricky. I recommend wanting to take it slow to be as smart as possible to, you know, to make sure that you're being safe out there because you are going to run into snow, especially in parts of York, Cumberland County. That's where I've been traveling today, starting in Portland, leaving around four o'clock, heading south. Uh, going all the way down to Kittery. There's snow on the ground in all of those spots so far, so be sure to keep an eye out as you're traveling. Live in Stormy this morning, I'm Sean Stackhouse. Lee and Sharon, back to you. All right, thanks, Sean. Other news we're covering. Today, President Trump will give what he's calling a victory speech after the Senate voted to keep him in office. And Senator Susan Collins is opening up about her vote to acquit the president. New Senator Maine's Zach Blanchard is live in Washington. And Zach, what is Senator Collins saying now that this is all finally over? Lee and Sharon, yeah, after nearly three weeks of heated back and forth between Republicans and Democrats, Senator Collins is saying she believes she made the right call. But so is Senator King. Ms. Collins, Mr. King, two votes, different verdicts. Maine Senator Susan Collins and Angus King divided as they determined the fate of President Donald Trump. Well, In an interview with now. New Center Maine, Collins says she voted to acquit because Trump's actions did not reach the high bar of impeachment. Do you think he's learned his lesson? I hope that the president has learned his lesson, but We'll have to see. It's important that congressional oversight will be still there. And uh, the president has said that he does, does not like having the fact that he was impeached on, as he put it, his resume. Yeah, but so, he said he called the phone call perfect. Well, obviously, I disagree with that. The, pr the president's phone call was not close to perfect. I think there's enough evidence. On the other hand, King, an independent, stands by his vote to convict the president, though he says he realizes his decision could further fuel the divide in our country. I can't ignore that, but I also can't ignore what he did. While some say King simply sided with Democrats from the get-go, he insisted the evidence was clear all along. Would it be a clearer case if we'd heard from Bolton and Mulvaney? Absolutely. But I don't think they were fatal to whether or not we could make a, a fair and a fairly based decision trial. Both agree the trial was flawed, but they say they did what they thought was right for Maine and the nation. Zach, this vote for both senators could have lasting impact on them politically. So how does that play out here? Well, yeah, it will definitely have an impact for sure. For Senator King, that will maybe be down the road where it would maybe isolate some of his more conservative supporters. But the real impact will be felt by Senator Collins. She's, of course, long been known as a moderate Republican, and she's up for re-election. So a decision like this among her more middle-of-the-road independent supporters could be something that is tough for them. Many political experts saying this could be Collins' toughest race yet. Leon Sharp. All, All right. right, Zach Blanchard, live in D.C. for us this morning. Thank you very much. A man is in jail this morning after he was caught with over two pounds of fentanyl, several guns, and nearly $15,000 in cash. Bail for Hunter York, who is from Portland, has been set at $100,000. He is being held at the Cumberland County Jail. When an animal sanctuary needed to raise some money, they found some unique artists to help. And it probably helps that they have a nose for art. All right, the delays, the cancellations, they're trickling in. There are some already. Check our website for the latest or our mobile app. For kids that do go to school today, obviously winter gear and definitely boots. We've got snow falling now. And there'll be some very light icing this afternoon, too, to make things a little slippery. Tomorrow's round two, and it's much more severe than today's. Details are coming up soon.
you be the one to paint today? That is one of nine pigs at an animal sanctuary in Tennessee uh, uh, getting in touch with their creative side, if you will. One of the volunteers there taught the pigs to paint with their snouts. They're pretty smart animals, so they were the perfect choice for this project. The artwork is auctioned off to raise money for the sanctuary and the 82 animals that live there. Now, volunteers say that the response has been pretty unbelievable so far, and each painting has sold for at least... $200. Would you spend $200 for a pig painting? It's it's a $200 donation to the sanctuary is is That's you're probably not doing it for the that. artwork it's at this probably point. Probably right? not. Although it's kind of fun to see them see them do it. And ironically, our stumper question is about pigs. Pigs. How do pigs prefer to sleep? Nose to nose, tail to tail, side by side? or on their own. Look at those little piglets. Look though. at those, those little so pigs. What also cracks me up is these giant pigs and she's talking to them in this little baby <laughs> voice. <laughs> so cute. Anyway, we'll have the answer to this stumper coming up a little bit later. You don't want to just get stuck in the same routine. A lot of people love their jobs, but others might be a little bit bored. And that's why one man decided to take a job he never had really considered before and says he's so glad he did. We'll explain coming up. All right, we're getting closings and cancellations we are. and delays and things. You see them at the bottom of your screen, yeah, website. We've been analyzing the list. Like yeah. uh, Lewis and Auburn closed, Biddeford Saco closed. Mm -hmm. South Portland open. Yeah, and Portland open yeah. and Bangor open. Um, but a lot of the colleges in those same towns are also closed. Are also closed, yeah. So, so it's kind of, like, well, it's a tough call. I'll, yeah. I, I will say that. I mean, it's not a lot of snow. It's going to be manageable. It's just bad timing for the morning. So. You know, that, that's, that's a tough call, and that's why I'm glad in this case I'm not a superintendent that has to make that call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check out the radar. Snow is overspreading the area from southwest to northeast. There's still a lot of dry air in eastern Maine, so some of that isn't exactly hitting the ground yet. But it has been across the south here for a few hours. I put temps on here. Notice we're below freezing everywhere. The mildest spot is Cape Elizabeth at 27. So as this snow falls and hits the ground, hits driveways, sidewalks, front stairs, it will stick if there isn't already some salt down to melt it away. 
It's steady snow. It's heaviest right in the greater Portland area right now, up through Sebago Lake and on into the Oxford Hills and up through the Route 2 corridor. But it's never going to be a really heavy snow where the crews can't keep up with it. So I think this is why it'll be somewhat manageable, while not easy to get around, not impossible, if you know what I mean. As we look east, starting to get some snow hitting the ground. Waterville's reporting snow. Looks like it's marching up through Plymouth, closing in on Bangor. And again, it looks like it's snowing in all of this area, but there's still some very dry, low-level air that'll chew away at some of those flakes. Just some flurries hitting the ground now, but it'll get steadier. It's just a matter of time here in the next 45 to 50 minutes. Now, we have plenty of cold in place at the moment. Unfortunately, though, this high is going to drift east and not stay to our north to lock that cold in. That means mild air will be able to chip away at that cold, and that's a recipe for mixing. And I think ice is going to be a huge player late tonight and more so tomorrow when the bigger surface low starts to move in with heavier precipitation. This morning, though, snow spreading in a steady, moderate paced snowfall. Roads will be snow, snow covered and they'll be slippery, so this commute will be a slow one. Midday still snowing in most places, but it's starting to near an end. We've got this mixing line working up through the greater Portland area. There'll be some sleet mixing in at that point. Also this afternoon, the intensity starts to let up too. It'll be much lighter precipitation and it'll be a light mix that's falling. Sleet, some freezing rain, and maybe some plain old drizzle too right along the coastline. Although we may not get much above 32. I think treatments this evening of salt and sand will do a, a huge benefit for the evening commute. It'll be much easier than this morning's one. Here's round one snowfall, two to four inches of snow, most of it falling between now and noon. And then this afternoon, it's the light mixing. And we get into this lull through the majority of the night. Not much happening. Some light snow up in the mountains, a few sleep pellets and a few freezing raindrops elsewhere. Tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., same sort of thing. Very light icing going on. And then the surface low starts to get to the Gulf of Maine and more precipitation arrives and it gets a little heavier. And I think these numbers along the coast may be a little optimistic. We're probably going to be right at 32. So icing is a threat at the coastline too. Notice how far this pink line goes all the way up into the foothills. The all snow zone is across the Allagash and the mountains. Now as the storm system rolls through and rolls by us, cold air tucks in behind it and attempts to change the mix precip back over to snow as it ends tomorrow night. The timing of this is going to be critical. I don't think it's a very long period of snow for the coast, but it'll be a much longer one across the interior and up over the mountains. So additional snowfall up there will be more significant. I'm most concerned though with this glaze of ice. It looks like it's going to be pretty solid from Lewiston to Augusta to Bangor. And I think that this particular computer model is missing out on the coast. I'm thinking right now we're going to get a solid glaze at the coast too. And that means driving will be kind of hazardous in a lot of spots for the majority of the day. I don't think though it's enough ice for any outages, at least not widespread ones. Can't rule out a scattered or an isolated outage. I think it's more just a, a travel nuisance. Now the snowfall towards the tail end won't be much. The second round, only an inch or two for the coast. Lewiston, Augusta, Bangor, you might get a third inch. It's the mountains in far north where it's the more significant snow. And this is great news for ski resorts and snowmobile country. Looks like six to 12 inches. And if you do the two day math, we're talking like 15 or 16 inches of snow up in the Allagash, maybe a little bit more too up in the Canadian border. Marine forecast gale watches for tomorrow. Today, not bad on the water, two to four foot seas. Visibility obviously reduced in snow. Winds out of the east northeast. So we have snow this morning, two to four inches, and then a light wintry mix this afternoon. That continues tonight as we get this lull. And then tomorrow the second wave moves in, and it's going to be an icy mess tomorrow morning, ending as some snow tomorrow afternoon. We get to the weekend, it's back to sunshine, but it's a really cold two days. Highs in the mid-20s. Next week, milder again. Mid-30s, close to 40. Guess I'll have to put the heat on. <laughs> <laughs> in your house, I don't doubt that the thermostat has been off. <laughs> oh, look who's talking. I know, I know, I know. I saw your commercial. Black, I right? saw your commercial. <laughs> Meantime, you guys, if you'd like to check on storm closings and delays in your area, we have a new way you can do that. You can text the word STORM to this number, 207-828-6622, and you'll get a link to the complete list. Just click on it and look up your school. All right. Thank you, sir. And then let's check our stumper, oh, shall good. we? Yeah.
while you're here. Do pigs prefer to sleep nose to nose, tail to tail, side by side, or on their own? I'm going with the what I think is the obvious side by side. Right? I mean, right? Like pigs in a blanket, I feel like they should all be like all next snuggly to each other, and snuggled up. Yeah, yes. that makes the most sense. I mean, look at the photo. They're side right. by side. They're not so. sleeping. <laughs> no, they're not sleeping. <laughs> it's going to be good. All right, we're saying I say C. side C. by side. Wow. What? Nose to nose. That is that so can't weird. Be true. Show me the proof. I don't Studies believe. show <laughs> pigs often have dreams similar to humans, and snuggling close to each other makes them happy. Jeez. Wouldn't that be side by side? I so when they're awake, Pigs like to eat and sunbathe. I still feel like that would be side by side and not nose to nose. How do they know that they have dreams? We asked like, them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. Do you ever see Charlotte's Duh. Duh. Hello, pig talk. Right. Just saying. There you go. <laughs> I, I still don't believe it. There you it. go. Yeah, we're going to dispute. We threw a challenge flag. Right? <laughs> right. We don't believe it. All right. So to beat the stigma of working in the skilled trades, businesses are collaborating to keep young workers in the main workforce. Jeremy Earle went to a community college for a few years before realizing it wasn't for him. He worked at a pizza place and then settled into a career in automotive repair at Moody's Collision Center. Now he says he loves working with his hands and wished he had gotten into this right after high school. The newer cars every year, they become more complex. You don't want to just get stuck in the same routine and having something new every day keeps you motivated and keeps you going. We're just trying to remove those barriers for young people and help them get that leg up that they need to get into a viable career and to stay in Maine. Since the Blue Collar Scholarship Fund started in 2012, it's handed out $137,000 to more than 100 young Mainers. And by the way, New Center Maine will be hosting our Works For Me night at the Mariners game on Friday. $2 from every ticket sold will support that very scholarship. You can find a link to buy discounted tickets by going to our app or our website. And our very own Sharon Rose Vazis will be the MC for the evening. I'm excited and I have to say a little nervous. Well, and you should be. I've done, I did it once this year. And it's it's a it, lot. Yeah, you're really going to be. Yeah, it's really hard. It's not going to be fun at all. He does this to me all the time, you know. <laughs> you should practice. Set me up. All right, still to come. New rules about vaping going into effect today. Why the FDA is hoping the change will help stop kids and teens in particular from picking up e-cigarettes. That's coming up.
new regulations on vaping go into effect today. It's part of an FDA policy that prohibits manufacturers from making, marketing, and distributing most of their flavored products. The ban will only apply to specific devices such as the pre-filled pods and cartridges. Current marketing techniques have been tied to the rising rates of youth vaping. Some lawmakers say that kids are going to find the loopholes in it and shift to disposable e-cigarette products instead. Coming up, I'm News Center Maine's Zach Lanchard live in Washington this morning. President Donald Trump set to give a victory speech. That's what he's calling it after the Senate acquitted him on all charges. Coming up, we'll tell you how Maine senators are opening up about their decisions. And I'm News Center Maine's Sean Stackhouse. I'm live in Stormy this morning and the morning commute is looking pretty messy. We're going to be taking a look at all the road conditions across the state. Right now, speed limits have been reduced to 45, so be careful out there. A teenager from Lewiston battling leukemia got a little more than she had bargained for when she was asking some strangers for birthday cards. Yeah, a uh, 13-year-old Emerson Rolls received more than a thousand cards so far. <laughs> she was diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia, and then on top of it, she was born with a rare genetic disorder, making it hard for her to walk and talk. Her mom says the generosity from people she doesn't even know is just incredible. And if you'd like to send her a card, Emmy's birthday is actually on Saturday the 8th, so a link to her address is on our website. Happy birthday to you. Such a simple gesture that can right? make such a big difference. Absolutely. Right? All right. Uh, we are getting ready to start our next half hour. Day's top stories and look at the weather coming right up here. More Storm Center on the Morning Report coming up right now. We're live in Washington this morning where the impeachment trial of President Trump is finally over. President Trump acquitted on all charges. We'll tell you how Maine Senator Susan Collins is opening up about her controversial decision. This morning snow is going to make for a tricky morning commute. We'll have the latest road conditions live from Stormy. Snow is moving in right now. This is going to be a messy couple of days. I'll break it down for you. An old shoe store is trying out something new. Yeah, with a mission to help the community one step at a time. This is Storm Center on the Morning Report.
Good morning, I'm Sharon Rose Vaznes. And I'm Lee Goldberg. We're at the beginning of a two-day weather event, which is why you see Sean Stackhouse. Is, mm -hmm. He's outside of Stormy now. You see some <laughs> snow there. And Todd's in the Weather Center. We'll get started with you. Hello, sir. Coming yeah. down. Yeah, solid coatings out there already. A few towns reporting as much as two inches so far beneath some of the heavier bands. The snow has been overspreading us from southwest to northeast. And we're finally starting to get into some very light snow in eastern Maine. The air over here is really dry, so some of this is not actually hitting the ground. But it is across the south, and road conditions are not great right now. It's going to be a slow morning commute. We have plenty of cold over us right now. Unfortunately, this high is going to drift east, and it's not going to be able to lock it in. And that means the mild air flows into it and chips away at that cold above our heads. And that's a recipe for mixing. And I think ice is going to play a huge role in our weather, not so much this morning, but later today, tonight, and definitely tomorrow when the second wave moves in, the stronger of the two storms. So this morning, it's basically light snow with occasionally getting some bursts of heavier snow within it. Uh, but again, the roads are going to be snow covered and slippery if they're not treated. By midday, still snowing through most of the state, except across the south. That mixing line works its way up to the greater Portland area, and we start getting into some sleet. Then in the afternoon, sleet works up through Augusta and eventually to Bangor. And at this point as well, the precipitation intensity is really going to start to wind down. It'll be a very light mix later this afternoon and through the majority of the night too, almost like this lull in the action between the first wave and the second one tomorrow. So this is round one, two to four inches of snow and most of it falling between now and noon. This afternoon we get into that wintry mix. Snow arriving at the moment, 24 degrees. Your temperatures are going to be cold and the roads are going to be snow covered. Still snowing midday and then that light wintry mix this afternoon. Highs only around 30 degrees. We'll talk about round two coming up in about 10 minutes, guys. We'll see you then. And of course, the big question at this time of the morning when we're in the midst of a storm is what are my driving conditions going to be like this morning? Sean Stackhouse has been out in stormy this morning checking that out. What can you tell us, Sean? I, right now it's pretty. All right, we're having some technical difficulties with that live shot, so we'd like to let you know that if you want to check on storm closings and delays, here's a new way to do that. Text the word STORM to the number you just saw on your screen. That's 207-828-6622, uh, and you'll get a link so that you can check on that entire list. All right, here's Morning Rush in 90 seconds or less. Knowing how much you should be paying for your prescriptions can be confusing, but new state rules might help with that. New drug price transparency rules have taken effect. Drug makers and pharmacies are now required to tell the state how much they're charging for medications. The hope is that sudden spikes in drug prices will now have to be justified. Students at an elementary school in Portland will be getting a real life lesson about the history of civil rights movement in Maine. Starting this fall, Riverton Elementary will be renamed the Gerald E. Talbot Community School. Talbot was the first African American elected to Maine's legislature. He also chaired the State Board of Education. Movie star and Hollywood legend Kirk Douglas has died. I'm Spartacus! Douglas was known for playing tough guys in movies like Spartacus and Gunfight at the OK Corral. Off screen, he was a family man married for 60 years, father to four sons, including actor Michael Douglas. Kirk Douglas was 103 years old. Well, you can certainly say that Kobe Bryant had basketball in his blood. His dad played pro ball in Italy when Kobe was just six years old. The team that Joe Bryant played for honored his late son with a pregame memorial yesterday. Fans held up a banner remembering six-year-old Kobe, which read, you began to play here, and as an adult, you made us dream. And that is your morning rush, 90 seconds or less. For more of these stories and more, check out our website or head to our mobile app. Donald John Trump B, and he is hereby acquitted of the charges in said articles. And with that, the impeachment trial of President Trump is over. He's been acquitted of charges of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. The vote was 
almost entirely along party lines, but the president did lose support from one Republican, Senator Mitt Romney, voting to convict on one of those articles and said what the president did was egregiously wrong. President Trump says he will make a statement from the White House today at noon. News Center Maine's Zach Blanchard is live in Washington this morning as Maine Senator Susan Collins is sharing more about her position on that final vote. So what is she saying, Zach? Anything new? Sharon, I spoke to Susan Collins just before she made that final vote. She's saying she knows she made the right call and believes President Trump knows he made a mistake. Take a listen. Do you think he's learned his lesson? I hope that the president has learned his lesson, but we'll have to see. It's important that congressional oversight will be still there. And uh, the president has said that he does, does not like having the fact that he was impeached on, as he put it, his resume. Yeah, but so. he said he called the phone call perfect. Well, obviously, I disagree with that. The, pr the president's phone call was not close to perfect. Now, Colin says that call between the president and Ukraine was just one element she had to consider here. And she says overall, she felt the president's actions did not reach the high bar worthy of impeachment. But coming up in the next half hour, we'll have more on how each of Maine's senators are falling on opposite sides of history. Leah Chairman. All right, Zach Blanchard, live in the nation's capital. Thank you very much. So we've been asking you now, if you were a U.S. senator and you get to have a say in the President Trump's impeachment process, how would you have voted? Right, would you have voted to acquit the president or convict him? You can let us know on our website or using our mobile app, or you can send us a text as well. And so far, 55% saying that you would have voted to convict, 45% voting to acquit. Democrats in New Hampshire may be divided over who they'll be supporting in next week's primary. But there is one thing they are all looking for in a candidate. Someone that can beat Trump, that can take him on. Hear what voters are saying as they decide who might be able to win the White House next. First, though, Todd, one thing we need to know about today's weather. <laughs> Bet you can guess. Our uh, first little wave of our two-day storm working in now. And this first layer is going to be snow and we'll get about two to four inches, and then we start getting into some mixing. But we'll see this right here for the morning commute, and that means your morning is gonna be pretty messy. Tomorrow looks a lot worse, though, with icing. We'll get into that in a few minutes.
the candidate who can beat Trump and who has the experience to hit the ground running and get some things done. Choosing a candidate who can take on President Trump seems to be a priority of a whole lot of New Hampshire primary voters right now. Democratic candidates are driving all over the Granite State this week, trying to win over primary voters. In Summersworth, which is on the border with Maine, former Vice President Joe Biden got off his tour bus for a little rally yesterday. Biden says that he knows he didn't do very well in Iowa, but is still committed to fighting hard to get to first place in New Hampshire. His supporters told us they think Biden is the best choice to beat President Trump and the former vice president. Well, he agrees. From the moment I announced that I believe, as the mayor said, we're in a battle for the soul of this nation, and I really do. The candidate who can beat Trump and who has the experience to hit the ground running and get some things done. Biden, he's, I'm not sure he's going to bring in the young vote, and, you know, it's they all have it's, something they good. They all have their strengths yeah. and, and weaknesses, and unfortunately, you know, you got this one's got this, that yeah. one's got that. It's like, there's not one that's like, okay, that's the one. Now, all of the voters will have plenty of chances to see and hear the candidates over the next five days. And our Pat Callahan and Hannah Deneen are on the ground throughout the New Hampshire primary and will have full coverage on air and online. I'm New Center Maine, Sean Sackhouse. We're live in Wells this morning where the snow is coming down and road conditions aren't too great. We're going to bring you a full look at what it's doing outside and what your commute may be like in just a few minutes. And that snow means delays and cancellations. There's a list on our website and on our mobile app. You can get it there. There will be, though, a lot of districts going to school today, so obviously the kids need winter gear and boots. We'll have a few inches of snow before we get some light mixing this afternoon. Tomorrow looks a lot more severe with icing. Details coming up. All right, 6.15, your time now. We want to let you know there are a couple of flight delays out of the Portland jet port because of the storm this morning. So, you know, as always, be sure to check your flight before you head to the airport. But it, it is apparently causing some mm. problems. Word is they have to de-ice over there for obvious reasons. And, um, you know, by the time they get done with the de-icing and then go taxi to take off, the wings are already coated in ice and snow again. So there's not enough 
you know, of a, of a window there to do the takeoff. Yeah. So that seems to be the reason for some of those delays. And these are the early flights too, the 6 a.m. flights. And then there'll probably be a little bit of uh, a break. And then we've got the eight o'clock flights that go out. So uh, most part here, the snow intensity is gonna be manageable. Uh, but every once in a while, we're getting these bursts coming through. Um, and it's not gonna last too long, you know, six hours or so, we get two to four inches and then we're on to the mixing portion of the event. But you can see the snow over spreading the state from southwest to northeast eventually getting up into the county. Steady snow in southern Maine, and I threw temps on here just to show you that everyone's below freezing. The mildest spot, Cape Elizabeth and Wells, 26. So as the snow hits the ground, roads, driveways, sidewalks, front stairs, it'll stay there, it'll stick, and things are gonna be very slippery unless, of course, there's some salt down for treatment. Here's some heavy bands from Wiscasset back through Lisbon Falls and on over to the Lewiston-Auburn area. Uh, that's some heavy returns in there. So this is marching northbound right up 295 and 95. Uh, and they're going to meet in Gardner pretty soon. A little lighter in Augusta and Waterville. And now we're getting into steady snow in the Bangor area. Just getting some reports there that it's coming down at a pretty good rate. You can see some darker shades up through Old Town. North of here, it's much lighter, although Millinocket is reporting some very light snow. It's still saturated, the air is. And it's going to take a little while longer to complete that saturation process. Now, we have plenty of cold Arctic air in place. But unfortunately, this high is not going to stay here and lock it in. It's going to drift east and allow milder air to work in aloft, chipping away at it. And that's a recipe for mixing. And I think ice is going to play a huge role with this entire storm eventually here, especially tonight and tomorrow when the larger surface flow gets to us. And I think that's why tomorrow's a much more hazardous scenario. Speaking of hazardous, that's what the roads are going to be like this morning with this steady snow falling at a moderate clip. Be careful, give yourself extra time. Midday, still snowing throughout most of the state, but the snow phase is nearing an end as that mixing line works up from the south. We'll get into sleep by midday in the greater Portland area, and then that sleet line continues to work northbound during the afternoon and evening all the way up through Bangor, basically getting to Route 2 before it stops. Now this afternoon, the other thing is, the precipitation intensity is going to be much, much lighter. It'll be a very light wintry mix at this point with some drizzle kind of mixed in. And I think treatments, salt, sand, will do a huge, huge benefit for the evening commute. I think it's going to be a much better one than the morning commute, provided that salt goes out there on the roads, of course. Round one of snow today, two to four inches. And that's essentially between now and noon before we start getting into that mix. Now tonight, it's going to be a lull in the action here. Not much happening. Snow, lighter snow falling across the far north. To the south, not much, just some very light icing through the course of the night and early tomorrow morning where there'll be some light glazes around. I am more concerned though, once we get deeper into the morning, into the early afternoon, the surface flow gets into the Gulf of Maine and heavier precipitation arrives. And we look at all this pink on here. There's going to be a ton of sleet and freezing rain falling right up through about three o'clock. Then the surface flow goes by, cold air tucks in behind the storm, and that's going to attempt to end things as snow. Now that period of snow won't be very long at the coastline. It will be a lot longer across the interior and especially in the mountains and north where we get significant snowfall. But icing, I think, is the most is the biggest concern, at least for me. Lewiston, Augusta, Bangor, solid glazes and don't fall asleep at the coastline. I've got a feeling and a hunch that we're going to get a solid glaze at the coast too. not enough for numerous and widespread power outages, but certainly enough to create the hazardous travel conditions. Now, as this thing wraps up, as that final little burst of snow and phase of snow, only an inch or two at the coast, but Lewiston, Augusta, Bangor could get a third inch, and then you got more significant snow up north. And if you do the two-day total on the snow up north, you know, we're talking like 16, 17 inches across the county and over a foot in the mountains. Marine forecast, gale watches tomorrow, sees two to four feet and easterly winds today, 10 to 20 knots. So snow this morning and then a light mix this afternoon, kind of a lull tonight, and then we get this icy mess tomorrow, ending as a brief period of snow in the afternoon and evening. Over the weekend, the sun is back, but it's a really cold two days. 20s on Saturday, single digits Sunday morning, and only recovering to the 20s Sunday afternoon. Wow, that's gonna be cold. It will be. Great. Yeah. Yep, all right, meantime, Let's ask Sean Stackhouse how cold it is out there right now, <laughs> yeah, shall we? Oh, how cold <laughs> is it? Hey, Sharon Lee and Todd. It's actually not all that cold. It's a little chilly. It's not as nice as it's been the past few mornings. 
but it is snowing and that's why we're out here. We're in Wells this morning, just outside of uh, the on-ramp to I-95 in their toll plaza here. Let's talk about the snow conditions. When we left Portland this morning around 4 a.m., it was certainly snowing, uh, or it, it was certainly not snowing. That has changed, however. We've moved as we move further south around that Biddeford line close to 4.30 was when we really started to pick up and see more of that snow. And an interesting thing on I-95, a lot of snow was collecting and it seemed like a lot of drivers were sticking to just two lanes when it is only uh, a, a three lane road there. But the drivers were sticking with two, they were staying safe. But uh, speed limits have been reduced to 45 miles per hour by the Maine Turnpike Authority. And we can see more plows coming out right now. We see an MTA truck here right now, and there is another one approaching too. Uh, there's, so a lot of folks are out and about, and some folks who are, you're also gonna see, are the main Department of Transportation. Those folks are the ones who have to be laying down salt, sand, pre-treating the roads, and that's something they haven't had to do a lot this year in 2020. Before today, I had the chance to speak with the public uh, information officer, Paul Merrill of the Department of Transportation, about this quiet season and how that changes up their budget season. This is what he had to say. No matter what the groundhog tells us, we still have to budget for seven more weeks of winter. Uh, at this point, compared to the same point last year, we're actually down a little bit in terms of spending and miles plowed. It's been a little bit more of a mild winter, but that could change at any minute. One bad snowstorm or ice storm could eat up a lot of that budget, so we're just prepared for anything. So, so the budget difference is more than two million dollars between last year and this year so far but we still have seven more weeks of what they call their winter season so that can always change and more snow to come today and we'll be keeping you updated on all of that on air and online live in wells this morning sean stackhouse lee and sharon back to you yeah don't right. trust the groundhog yeah, let's very hope wise it's only <laughs> seven weeks all right sean yeah. thank you very much all right if you'd like to check on storm closings and delays wherever you are it's pretty easy. Just send us a text. The word storm to 207-828-6622. You'll get a link to a complete list. All you have to do is click. And one of Maine's biggest ski resorts is unveiling some major new improvements that it says will bring even more people to the slopes. We'll have details on that coming up.
Okay, skiers, listen up. Sunday River has just announced a 10 year plan to draw more Mainers and folks from away to the resort. It'll be replacing old chairlifts and building new ones. One of the new lifts will be taking people to a new neighborhood, if you will, which will be set up and built on the slopes. The plan includes a new restaurant at the summit of Jordan Bowl, a hydrotherapy spa, hello, at the base of <laughs> Whitecap. I'm in. I'm New Center Maine's Zach Blanchard live in Washington this morning. Today, President Donald Trump expected to give what he's calling a victory speech after senators voted to acquit him on all charges. Coming up, we'll tell you how Maine senators are sharing what they feel about their final decisions. One of the things that Mainers are kind of known for is helping each other out through some hard times. Absolutely. And a shoe store in Belfast is taking that kindness to kind of a new level. It's very creative what they're doing. Folks at the Colburn Shoe Store have come up with an unusual idea to help folks in their community one pair of shoes at a time. A pay what you can rack where you just pay what you can, whatever you can afford for a pair of shoes. Shoppers drop however much they can afford into an anonymous donation box. No questions asked. If the pair fits well, you just take them home. The store in Belfast is known as America's oldest shoe store. It's been in business since 1832 and the owner says the idea is to also set an example for people to give a helping hand whenever, however they can. We all have the ability to help in so many ways. Everyone can help. Um, I just have a platform of shoes, but whoever you know takes these shoes, you know they can write letters, they can call, they can help the elderly, they can shovel. You know, it's just a, a way of having the whole community pay it forward for each other. And they want to keep the program going by restocking the rack, hopefully all year round, to help those who need shoes the most. Now, the rack does offer shoes for men, women, and children. On your way out, you're just asked to maybe let the store managers know that you will be taking a pair. Pretty cool stuff. Love right it. And the idea that anyone can help, like every, every one of us has something we can do. And they're a shoe store and they figured out how they can help. Love, Love it. It's it good stuff. All right, first look at your weather today's top stories is just ahead. Our next half hour starts right now. Snow this morning is just the start of a two-day storm. I'll have the latest.
It's going to be a messy morning commute today. We'll be keeping an eye on the roads for you live from Stormy. Ms. Collins, not guilty. And we're live in Washington this morning where the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump is over. Trump acquitted on all charges. Coming up, we'll tell you how Maine Senator Susan Collins and Angus King are opening up on their decisions. This is The Morning Report. Good morning. It's a stormy Thursday, everybody. I'm Lee Goldberg. And I'm Sharon Rose Vaznes. Yeah, the snow is here. Um, it's just the start, though. Uh, we've got you covered. Sean Stackhouse out in Stormy, tracking conditions on the roads, and Todd giving us the overall view. We'll get to Sean in just a second. We will lead off our leadoff hitter today, Mr. Gunner. <laughs> Batten first. Oh, that brings me back to the Mookie Betts trade. That makes me sad. Thanks, Goldie. Now we don't have our, our stud hitter. Um, anyway, back to the to the to the to the part that matters, the storm itself. Um, the snow is over arriving right now from southwest to northeast, and it's falling pretty steadily in a lot of spots. And we have plenty of cold right now, but it's not going to stay here. Mild air is going to kind of chip away at it by the middle of the day and afternoon. And that's kind of a recipe for a lot of icing. And I think that's going to play a large role in the overall storm, this two day storm, especially tomorrow when the surface low, the larger one gets to us and we'll have some significant icing probably tomorrow. This morning, though, it's all snow. Roads will be snow covered. It'll be a very slow morning commute. By midday, though, while it's still snowing in a lot of spots, the mixing line is going to start working up through the greater Portland area. We'll get into some sleet at this point, and that'll cut off the snowfall accumulation. During the afternoon, that sleet line gets all the way up through Bangor, basically to Route 2. And at this point, we'll also see the intensity of the precipitation really lighten up quite a bit. And we'll actually go through a bit of a lull by the evening and overnight tonight before we get to round two tomorrow. Two to four inches of snow expected from round one. And essentially, that's now through about lunchtime, now through noon. Snow arriving at the moment, mid-20s. Drive safely this morning. Still snowing midday. This afternoon, it's a light wintry mix. High temperatures around 30. We'll have more on the uh, second part of the storm coming up in 10 minutes. First, Sean Stackhouse is live in Stormy this morning. Let's check in with him. Hey, Sean. Hey, Todd, thank you all. I'm comfortable to be inside of Stormy after standing outside in the snow just a few minutes ago. And while I was standing outside, you really notice when you're walking around on the pavement just how much snow has really accumulated in parts that are closer to where the sidewalk is that haven't been plowed. Uh, we were in Wells and we still are right now probably about two uh, inches already coming down here so it's moving steady and folks are really out taking it slow. It's important to be safe and I'll, I'll give you a, a look as we go through uh, right now. We're in Wells. We're heading back on to I-95 as we speak and uh, as we go through the the tolls here it's uh, important to note just uh, the the work that's being done as you can see in front of us uh, there is uh, a plow right out there I'm trying to get this shot up for you uh, we're right behind the plow right now so folks are out they are trying to clear these roads but it's tricky when the snow comes down so fast it seemed like all of a sudden around four 30 uh, or so we really started getting hit but we're going to be keeping an eye out on this for the rest of the morning and we'll keep you updated on air and online live in stormy this morning i'm sean stackhouse lee and sharon back to you all right thank you sean very much some breaking new information about a story we've been following this morning. A man is dead after his truck fell through the ice in Orland. It happened last night on Alamusic Lake. Warden say 73-year-old Brian Wardwell was driving on the lake when the ice broke. We're told somebody nearby heard Mr. Wardwell screaming, tried to save him, but that person also fell through the ice. They were able to get out of the water safely, but Wardwell was already unconscious by the time wardens got to him. This is just another important reminder, wardens say, to always check the ice before you ever go out onto it. President Trump will be giving what he's calling a victory speech today after the Senate ultimately voted to keep him in office. And our Senator Susan Collins is opening up about her vote to acquit the president. Our Zach Blanchard has been following this process all along. He's in Washington again this morning with us. So what is she saying now that it's over, Zach? Lee and Sharon, after nearly three weeks of heated back and forth between Republicans and Democrats, Senator Collins says she believes she made the right call here. But so does Senator Angus King. Ms. Collins. Yeah, yes. Mr. King. Two votes 
different verdicts. Maine Senator Susan Collins and Angus King divided as they determined the fate of President Donald Trump. Well, in an interview with now. New Center Maine, Collins says she voted to acquit because Trump's actions did not reach the high bar of impeachment. Do you think he's learned his lesson? I hope that the president has learned his lesson, but we'll have to see. It's important that congressional oversight will be still there. And uh, the president has said that he does, does not like having the fact that he was impeached on, as he put it, his resume. Yeah, but so, he said he called the phone call perfect. Well, obviously, I disagree with that. The, pre the president's phone call was not close to perfect. I think there's enough evidence. On the other hand, King, an independent, stands by his vote to convict the president, though he says he realizes his decision could further fuel the divide in our country. I can't ignore that. But I also can't ignore what he did. Well, some say King simply sided with Democrats from the get-go. He insisted the evidence was clear all along. Would it be a clearer case if we'd heard from Bolton and Mulvaney? Absolutely. But I don't think they were fatal to whether or not we could make a, a fair and a fairly based decision trial. Witnesses Both agree the trial was flawed, but they say they did what they thought was right for Maine and the nation. Zach, this vote for both senators, all the senators, really could have a lasting impact on all of them politically. Uh, how does that play out here for our senators? Well, for King and Independent, this could have an impact later down the road, specifically among his more conservative supporters. But the real impact will likely be felt by Senator Collins. She's known as a moderate Republican, someone who uh, has uh, is up for re-election. And in this case, uh, in terms of the more uh, independent middle of the road voters. Uh, this is something they could potentially hold against her, but for her base, this could perhaps gain her more support there. Uh, but regardless, most political experts are saying this could be the toughest race she's faced yet. All right, Zach Blanchard live in Washington, D.C. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. So if you, you at home, were a U.S. senator and you had a say in President Trump's impeachment trial, how would you have voted? Would you have voted to acquit the president or convict him? And you can let us know by texting the word vote to 207-828-6622, or you can go right to our website or mobile app to do that. And uh, those who say they would vote to acquit uh, convict, excuse me, gained a little bit more ground in the last hour or so, 57% saying that, 43% saying you would have voted to acquit President Trump. You don't want to just get stuck in the same routine. More and more young people in Maine are finding that there is more than one path to a rewarding career and a decent living. We'll take a look at what works for me coming up next, <laughs> but now we'll check in with Todd to see what works for him when it comes to today's weather. Well, a two-day storm moving through the area, and round one is pretty much all snow today. Let's check at the radar. You can see that snow is overspreading the state. We're going to pick up two to four inches from this first layer, and then on top of that comes a lot of ice before we finish up with another round of snow tomorrow. Lots to talk about, especially with tomorrow. We'll do so in about five minutes.
It is possible that some people could feel like there's maybe a stigma against working in the skilled trades. Yeah, unfortunate. And some businesses are working together to change whatever that is. They say they hope to bring more young people into the main workforce in the skilled trades. Jeremy Earle, pretty good example. He went to a community college for a few years and then realized that really wasn't for him. He worked at a pizza place and then settled into a career in automotive repair at Moody's Collision Center. Now he says he loves working with his hands and wished that he had gotten into it right after high school. He says every day in every car is a new challenge. The newer cars every year, they become more complex. You don't want to just get stuck in the same routine and having something new every day keeps you motivated and keeps you going. We're just trying to remove those barriers for young people and help them get that leg up that they need to get into a viable career and to stay in Maine. And there's even a blue collar scholarship fund. It started in 2012 and has handed out $137,000 to more than 100 young Mainers to buy tools, books, and uniforms. It also helps pay for tuition and housing for an education in the skilled trades. And oh, by the way, New Center Maine will be hosting our Works For Me night at the Maine Mariners game. It will be tomorrow night. $2 from every ticket sold from this game will go towards the Maine Blue Collar Scholarship Foundation. You can find a link to buy discounted tickets by going to our app or our website. And some famous person named Sharon Rose <laughs> Vazinus will be the MC. Reason alone to go check it out. <laughs> All right, tomorrow night, Sharon revving up the crowd. That'll be fun. We've got to get through some ice tomorrow. Today it's snow. Already cancellations, delays, not a huge list, but there's one, a lot of big towns too, Lewis and Auburn, um, and also uh, Biddeford and Saco uh, have days off today. Kids that go to school definitely need boots for the snow and a little bit of icing this afternoon too. Breaking down tomorrow for you, coming up in a few minutes.
right, here's a live look from Stormy. Your morning commute could be a little slippery. We'll check in with New Center Mayor John Stackhouse. He's tracking our road conditions in just a couple of minutes. You know, and you probably can't see out yeah. the window here, but it is coming down. It is, yeah. It's not a ton of snow. I mean, it's only going to be a few inches, but it's been 19 days since our last one inch or more snow event. And the timing does matter because you got oh, buses totally and you got kids. And so sure. it's not so much the amount as to what time this is happening. Exactly. And that's why there are delays and cancellations, you know, and, and not every district is closed. Kind of a tough call for superintendents this morning. You know, three, three and a half inches of snow, uh, but falling during, you know, bus time. So you make the call, not my job, thankfully. I'll tell you what's gonna happen though. We've got the snow over spreading us from Southwest to Northeast, now getting into Northern Maine. It's getting steadier in the Eastern Maine area too, but we've had a few hours of snow across the South. It's a lot lighter now and the snowflake size is pretty small across York County. I threw temps on here too, just to show you that we're all below freezing. The mildest spot is Cape Elizabeth at 27 and down in Portsmouth and Kittery where it's 28. So as this snow hits any surface, roads, drive, sidewalks, front stairs, if they don't have salt down, there's going to be snow covered conditions and that makes things really slippery. It's a little heavier though back through Sebago Lake up in Naples and uh, down over the other side of the lake in Sebago. Raymond has some intense snowfall. Lewis and Auburn's pretty steady. Looks like that band goes right through Topsom and Brunswick. Uh, back through Durham as well, and then into the mid coast out through Bath and New Harbor. We go northbound, a little lighter snow for the northern half of Androscoggin County as you head up uh, Route 4 through Turner and up to Livermore and Livermore Falls. But then it's a lot steadier along Route 2 and a little bit heavy too as you get into interior Waldo and Knox County. Steady snow, greater Bangor now and points east. A lot lighter to the north, but the atmosphere is getting more saturated. So the intensity is going to continue to pick up through the morning. Now we've got plenty of cold right now. Unfortunately, it's not going to stay here. This high drifts east and doesn't lock it in. And that allows mild air to chip away at this cold and eventually getting into a lot of mixing. And tomorrow with the larger storm, that's going to be a big player ice, significant icing possible in some spots. Snow spreading in this morning, steady, moderate clips, so slow and snow covered roads. It's going to be slippery. Give yourself extra time. Still snowing through the middle of the day, although check this out. The end is near around lunchtime in Portland with the sleet line working up through the greater Portland area. And then during the afternoon and early evening through the rest of southern parts of the state. You know, Augusta gets into some sleet, Waterville too, even Bangor by the evening with all snow up north. The other thing is we're going to have a big lull in the action later this evening and tonight. So here's round one, two to four inches, most of that falling between now and noon enough to cause problems on the roads. Here's your lull through the night. Overnight tonight, just some snow up north and some light icing elsewhere. We get a thin glaze on roads tomorrow morning, and then I'm more concerned as this low gets into the Gulf of Maine, the intensity of the precipitation picks up through the middle of the day, and it looks like a lot of the surface temps are going to be below freezing. Look at all this pink. That's sleet and freezing rain. All snow zone, far northern mountains and up north. As the low shifts by us, cold air wraps behind it and we'll probably finish as a brief period of snow for the coast. A longer duration of snow though up north and in the mountains and then the entire system's gone tomorrow night. My biggest concern though is for this icy glaze to form. Certainly Lewiston, Augusta and Bangor, but don't fall asleep at the coastline. Have your guard up. My intuition's telling me that we are going to get a glaze at the coastline tomorrow, and that's going to lead to some dangerous travel conditions throughout the day. I don't think it's thick enough, though, for widespread power outages. There might be a few, but it's more of a travel nuisance tomorrow, the ice. Uh, the tail end of the storm will be some snow as we wrap it up. An inch or two to finish. About a third inch, Lewiston, Augusta, Bangor, more significant snow to the north and in the mountains. And if you do the two-day total there, we're talking well over a foot. The Allagash may have like 18 inches of snow. So this is awesome news for snowmobile country and the ski resorts too. There's your marine forecast. Gale watches for tomorrow. And here's the seven day. We've got snow today, two to four inches. Uh, lull tonight, and then it's back to some icing tomorrow before we finish as a little bit of snow tomorrow night. And then over the weekend, lots of sunshine, but oh so cold. Bundle up while you're playing in all of the snow if you're heading to the mountains or up north doing a little sledding. Okay, sounds good. Yep. And we definitely need to get out and get rid of whatever falls today before that tomorrow mess comes. It's going to be a layered, you know, this layered cake, snow, then ice, then snow. You know, 
I don't know what to tell you. So <laughs> I've got, got my strategy, ready. you've got yours. The answer is good luck. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. And if you want to check on closings and delays, of course, you can go to our website. You can look at the bottom of the screen. And you can do this. You can text the word STORM to 207-828-6622, and you'll get a link to the complete list, and you can just click on it. That's so easy. Right? <laughs> All right, up next, five things you need to know as you head out the door this morning. Good morning, I'm News Center Range, John Stackhouse, live in Stormy, giving you the latest on road conditions today. Now let's check in and take a quick look outside. Now we're on I-95, we just passed the Kennebunk Service Plaza, so as we are moving forward, you can see that the road conditions are looking a bit clearer than they were earlier in the shows. So uh, we've seen uh, a big change, it's snowing less, uh, it's snowing a little bit more lightly than it was just maybe 30 minutes ago. We've seen that trend as we've moved up uh, north on I-95. When we were further south in Kittery about an hour ago, we were really noticing how much snow we were getting and how packed the roads were. As we go through Kennebunk, we're noticing not as much snow on the roads, but we're going to be keeping you posted all throughout the morning on air and online. Donald John Trump B, and he is hereby acquitted of the charges in said articles. The impeachment trial of President Trump is over and the Senate voted to acquit him on the articles of um, obstruction of Congress and abuse of power. The vote was mostly along party lines, but the president did lose support from one Republican. Senator Mitt Romney voted to convict on one of the articles and said that what the president did was grievously wrong. President Trump says he will make a statement from the White House today at noon. And each of Maine senators falling on opposite sides of history in that vote. Republican Senator Susan Collins voting to acquit the president and independent Senator Angus King voting to convict. Each of them agree the trial was flawed and that the president made a mistake here, but they differed on whether or not the president's actions were worthy of impeachment. You can read much more on their opinions on both sides on our website and mobile app. Starting today, the FDA is banning many flavored e-cigarette products that have become so popular with teenagers. There is a loophole, though, in the new rule. The ban will only apply to specific devices like pre-filled pods and cartridges. Disposable e-cigarettes would still be legal, and many of those are sold in flavors which appeal to teenagers like mango and sour apple. An International Space Station crew has returned safely to Earth. The Soyuz capsule carrying three astronauts, including American Christina Koch, landed just a couple of hours ago. Koch spent 328 days on the space station, the longest single space flight by any woman and the second longest by any U.S. astronaut. While in space, she also completed the first all-female spacewalk. Her partner was Maine's own Jessica Meir, who is still in space. 
So as you know by now, lots of cl uh, closings and delays for schools all around our state. Some are still open. There was one open the other day, Mechanic Falls, and you mm. got to go, right? <laughs> I did, yes. So I was at uh, Elm Street. I think that's what it was. It was two days ago. <laughs> I've already forgotten it. I've been trying to work out the details of this forecast. But have a look. The kids up there are super, super cute. Hi, everyone. Todd Gutner here in Mechanic Falls, and I'm with the third graders from Elm Street. And they have a song for us today. You guys ready to sing? Yeah! Right, it. He turns water into vapor, a gas that rises to the air, and coal makes vapor condense to liquid and fall back down everywhere. He turns water into vapor, a gas that rises to the air, and coal makes vapor condense to liquid and fall. Back They are oh, obviously wow. learning Talk. about the water cycle right oh, now, wow. so, you know, evaporation, all that kind of Got stuff. Got a good beat and you can dance to it. Yes. Right? I like it. Yeah, we had a lot of fun <laughs> up there, so it was good hanging out with those kiddos. I think they're in school today, though. I didn't notice Mechanic Falls with a day off, but there are other schools that are, and you can find it on our website or our mobile app, of course. All right, we'll keep you updated throughout the morning. If you go out, stay safe, everybody.